The Covenant Partners and friends welcome you to Voice of Joy Word Ministries. Voice of Joy is a family church, a training center, and a restoring body. We are called to cover the earth with total man ministry. Now for today's message. We believe when we speak it is established when we decree it is guaranteed God will fill the house with signs and miracles and wonders begin to expect now lift your hands high now and pull it down determine this is your moment determine this is the hour determine the breakthrough of God is here in the holy name of Jesus in the holy name of Jesus Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you are happy this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, we serve a good God. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, He is good and His mercy is good forever. Hallelujah. And His mercies are new this morning. Amen. I want to thank you for the warm welcome you've given me and an opportunity the Lord has given me to be with you to share the word of God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to thank <coughs> your pastor and the bishop of the house of the Almighty God here and his dear family, the first lady and their family and all of you who have been a, a great <clears throat> love and support and, and who have shown your time and, and your support to us for what we are doing back home in India. Amen. I want to thank you, Bishop, for giving me this opportunity to be with you and to share the word of God to your people. Amen. Hallelujah. It's been always good for me to be here, you know, a few times here. And this time, this morning, I know that the Lord is going to minister to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for all your love and support. Continue to pray for the missions and the ministry back home in India. Yeah, you know, I was, I was playing with one of the orphanage boys the other day. You know, football. You know, soccer is a big thing in India. You know, so I, I, was, I was just playing and kicking the football along with him and interacting with him. I remember those days and the time that he was brought into our orphanage with all the sores, you know, in between his fingers and uh, in his, you know, in his all over his body, they would clean him because we want him to be healthy. And I remember, you know, those times that he would scream because it was painful for him. You know, and, and today he's healed, Amen. restored. Amen. Hallelujah. And he, was, and he was playing the football. And I was so happy to play the football with him. And I asked him, you know, do you feel healthy, good, and happy? You know, he was, he was so excited to play the football with me. He said yes, you know, and, and he was so happy to be at the school, doing well in his studies and things. You know, as, as I was playing with him, I asked him, what do you want to do when you grow up to a and to be a, a big man. You know, he, he pointed a small finger at me and he said like this, I didn't understand first. So I asked him again, what do you want to do when you grow up to be? He said, I want to be like you. Oh. No, that broke my heart. No, I have to fight back tears. You know, the thing that we could deposit in this 
precious young life. Your prayers, your love, your support means a great thing. You know, the Bible says heaven is a place of surprise. It's no surprise that God is going to be there. You're going to be there. I'm going to be there. You know? But you're going to see surprises. That people will come up to you and thank you for your dedication, for your support, for your contribution, for your prayer, for your love. That you express while you were on your earth here. Amen. So we want you to pray for for, for the orphan children and for Sharon Ministries back home. You know, we always pray for you. We pray for Bishop, you know, and his dear wife, the first lady of this house. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and the family and all of you. And we pray for Voice of Joy, Amen. World International Ministries, because, you know, God has given a, a divine connection, a divine uh, family connection, which cannot be taken up. You know, I was, I was in Washington, D.C. the other day, uh, stuck with all the delays in the plane and stuff. I was in the United States already. But after I took the flight and landed in Jacksonville, Florida, when the stewardess said, oh, welcome to Jacksonville, Florida, I felt like I was coming home. You, you know what I mean? There's something inside of me. Because I know a man of God in this place. Amen. I know a family here. I have a people to love me. I have a people to take care of. I feel very strong, strange, and which I cannot express by word. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I, I feel that's all been done because of divine connection by Almighty God. Amen. You know, God is a God of divine connection. Yeah. He has connected you in this house in the in this church yeah. for a purpose yeah. for a plan yeah. for for god to do something in you and through you yeah. inside of you and you know outside of you through this place yeah. so i want you to be sensitive to what god has for us Hallelujah. and and let's share one another's burden love one another help one another because that's the body of christ amen hallelujah I thank God for the times and the trips that your Bishop, Reverend Dr. Bishop Alan Coleman has taken to be with us in India. Amen. I know you have deposited great things in, in India, Bishop. We want to thank you for that. And I want you to release your sermon, Bishop, you know, now and then, to come and bless our people on the other side of the world. You know what I mean? Amen. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and may the Lord reward you with good health and strength, more of anointing and power, and more of the vision come true in your life and, and through the ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is good to us. Hallelujah. If you believe, say to yourself and turn to your neighbor and say, The Lord is good and His mercy and death forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I, I feel very much at, at home here preaching Amen. the word. Yeah. Only thing that I'm, uh, I, I'm preaching in another language, English. <laughs> so you need to excuse me. <laughs> and one day we are going to understand one another's language. It's going to be one language there. Right. People try to do one world government. It's not going to happen. There's only one place that's going to happen. Right. And it's the place. Hallelujah, we are longing for it. And when the trumpet would blow, Amen. we are going to be caught up in the midair. Hallelujah. And we live with Him for eternity. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time. Uh, Jesus, we, Lord, I pray, lift your name higher. We worship you, Lord. We acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. Minister to us, Lord, the word of the living God. One more time that we might be edified, strengthened, blessed, and walk in the mighty word of the Almighty God. We give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to preach to you a very short message from the word of God. And I know that you are 
ready to receive it. If you have a Bible, please turn with me to the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 3. And I'm going to read a portion of the scripture which the Lord himself asked and spoke to mankind. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam and asked him, Where are you? Verse 11. And he said, Who told you? Hallelujah. This morning, I'm going to preach and challenge you by the very first question asked by God in the Garden of Eden. This was the very first time God was demanding and asking the mankind something. The heaven looking at the mankind and asking the first question in the Bible, in the history of mankind. Where are you? Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and ask him and ask them, where are you? Where are you? Hallelujah. Are you in the garden this morning? This is your garden. Amen. Amen. For every man and every woman, God has always given us a garden. Hallelujah. Not just for Adam and Eve, but for every mankind, for every man and every woman, God blesses you and I with the garden. Hallelujah. Amen. This is your garden. Your spouse is your garden. Your children is your garden. Your profession is your garden. Your ministry is your garden. Your vision is your garden. Is your, your gifting is your garden. I want you to know that God has given the garden and planted the garden for you and I for, for, so that we, should, we can cherish and enjoy and have a great life in the garden. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, church, we need to understand that we have a place in God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God over the Bible, throughout the Bible, if you see, God gives an importance for places in the Bible. Hallelujah. When God made man and woman, when God made Adam and Eve in his own likeness, in his own image, he put them in a place called Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. Are you in the place this morning? Are you preaching the word of God? Are you believing the God's promises that has been given to you? Are you enjoying your marriage? Are you cherishing bringing up your kids? Are you happy with your grandkids? Are you happy in the church? Where are you, church, this morning? There was times God was meeting with Adam and Eve. He was having a great time. You know, it was not just a religious moment. It was not, uh, you know, goosebumps time. You know, people make things more complicated. But God, God wants you and I to know that He's more practical. Hallelujah. He wants to come and meet you at the time. The time of your prayer. The time that you would give your tithes and your offerings to God. The time that you would raise your hands and sing that old song, Hallelujah. And the times that you would read the Bible and say, Lord, I love you, Lord. That you would give the priority to God. God is looking for those times. Yeah. You want to meet with you there. Yeah. Where are you, church? Yeah. Hallelujah. Adam and Eve were so happy living and talking with God and with one another at the same time. And all of a sudden, one day, God would come. You know the story. And God knew that Adam was hiding. But he wants to put this question before him. He wants, to, he wants him to reply, where are you? And the second one, he said, who told you? Wow. I have seen you like that yesterday. I have seen your failures yesterday. I know your, your failures. I know your setbacks. Who told you? You know, today we need to be carried by the word of God and not by the circumstances and the situations we are going through. Hallelujah. Because God has given us a, a, a power 
to tread on. Hallelujah. There's a power given to you. Amen. From heaven, from above. When God blessed Adam and Eve, He told them to have dominion and not to be dominated. Right. It's one thing to have dominion and it's one thing to be dominated. Right. Where are you today? Are you being, are you exercising your authority? Are you having dominion? Are you being dominated today? Who told you? Wow. Who told you? There is a place of God for every mankind. Hallelujah. If you're not sitting in the chair, if you're not praising God, the Bible says God will make those stones and rocks to praise Him. He will always have people. But where are you? Where am I today? Am I in the call of God? Am I in the center of the will of God? Am I in the house today? The prodigal son, he thought if he would take all his possession and go away, he will have a better life. People of God, money is not the thing all about in our life. It's for us to be in Father's house. Hallelujah. Amen. Where are you today? Who told you? Maybe his friends told him to take the money and go with him. To put a party. It's good to have a party. But always we need to come back. Yeah. When you see the nature. When you see those birds in the sky. You will see them always fly back home. No matter where they are. But you and I. Been created in the nature, in the image of God. We need to check ourselves all the time, most of the time, every day. Where am I? What am I doing? Whom I'm listening to? We have a one voice. We have one word. And the word is the word of the living God. Hallelujah. No matter what we go through, no matter what we face, we need to say to ourselves, I will not listen to anyone else but then to the word of God and to the and to the leadership the Lord has given to you and I. Everybody has a garden. Cherish your garden. Stay in your garden and listen in the garden. You can talk to one another. See, God didn't set big rules there. You know, God didn't God didn't uh, dominate them. He made them. He put them in a beautiful garden. The Bible talks about the wonderful creation, those beautiful still waters and the rivers that was flowing there, beautiful flowers and, and, and animals there. They were dominating there. They were enjoying. But the day when they allowed that to be dominating, when they allowed themselves to be dominated, that's when they missed the place. The place that was created for Adam and Eve. How much... It would have broke the heart of God to put his own creation out of the garden because they will not listen to him. There's always a price that needs to be paid. Today, many a times, as Christians, as body of Christ, we don't realize, we don't examine ourselves. This is a high time for church, for you and I, saints of God, to know where are we today. I want to rather go through the book of Ruth this morning for our reference. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Ruth, chapter 1. There's two precious ladies. <clears throat> As an example for us in the Bible, there are two books in the name of those precious ladies, Ruth and Esther, precious women of God. Yes. Hallelujah. And God wants you and I to learn something through their life and through the things that they went through. Yes. If you read in, in the book of Ruth, chapter 1, the Bible says, and a certain man from Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons, because 
there was a famine. In the book of Ruth, it's a powerful history. Talking about a powerful woman who came from a, 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 a tribe of Moab. We read Elimelech, a God-fearing man. He was living in famine. And he was a resident of Bethlehem, Judah. Bethlehem represents nothing else but said to be the house of bread. Hallelujah. There is always house of bread for every mankind in this earth. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I have a house of bread. The bread of the living word of God. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Bethlehem, there was born Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Yeah, yeah. It's the house of bread. Hallelujah. He moved his location. He moved his family. He moved his vision from Bethlehem because he was experiencing famine. You know, at times famine come in our life. I don't know about you, I've experienced many times. As Bishop was telling, the more you concentrate on, the, on praising God, you forget the wall that's before you. Amen. And when you open the, your eyes to see the wall, there's no more wall there because you are taken in the praise. Praising God. Hallelujah. Where are you today? Who told you? Yelimelech. He moved from Bethlehem to Moab, looking for bread. But the Bible says in the third word, verse, he died. You know, we need to understand the, the word of God works the other way. Hallelujah. When the world is working this way, the word of the Lord works the other way. Hallelujah. You know, we don't need to think of the circumstance and the situation we are going through. There might be famine in the land. But we need to know we are in the house of bread. Hallelujah. We need to know that there is a vision. Hallelujah. If you lose our vision, we perish. Because there is praising. Need to be in the house of the righteous. Hallelujah. There need to be a shout. Hallelujah. There need to be a time given to God in our family. It's good to have party is good to have uh, food together it's good to to see the television together but are you praying before god spending time before god in your house where are you yeah. who told you wow this elimelech moved from bethlehem to judah uh, to 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 moab looking for bread looking for life he thought life would be better but the life went the other way. Yeah. The Bible says if you would lose life, Jesus, you will find it. How right. right. You know, it's, it's the other way. God is always working in our life. The more we, we concentrate of holding things in our life, we are going to lose it. But when we let it go, God will make it all be added to our life. Hallelujah. Yeah. When you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first in your life, the Bible says all things, these things are being, will be added unto you. Right. Where are you today? This guy, he went from Bethlehem to Moab. And he lost everything. He lost his identity. He lost his life. They became orphan. To make this story short, when you go back home, go through those chapters in the Bible, the book of Ruth will, will encourage you, will strengthen you. The Bible says one time they were coming back. Hallelujah. Thank God for coming back. The Bible talks in chapter 1 verse 19. The Bible says, and it came to pass when they came to Bethlehem, They all shouted and looked at her and said, Is this Naomi? Hallelujah. There is a recognition in your garden. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's your garden. Yeah. And you will be recognized only there and not in the land of Moab. Yeah. When you move away from your vision, when you move away from your dedication, when you move away from your consecration, 
When you move away from the things the Lord has given to you, you lose your identity. Right. When you come back, hallelujah, people started to recognize Naomi, hallelujah. Right. She has moved, she has, she has forgotten Bethlehem and she has, she has gone to live in the land of Moab. But when she was coming back, she had recognition, hallelujah. Right. Who told you that there's no recognition in your garden? The devil might tell you, the devil might steal the vision, steal the joy, steal your consecration so that you, he can strip you off. Because the Bible says when somebody leaves the place God has put for you and I, as we see in the, in the, uh, in the, in the Bible, in the gospel of Jesus, when he was talking about this man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. He lost his identity. The, the thieves, they stripped him off and left him half dead in the, in the streets, by the streets. Yeah. Where are you today? Who told you? To whom you are listening? Elimelech. He listened to the circumstance. He listened to the situation. He listened to the famine he was going through. And he lost everything. But thank God for Naomi. When she came back, yes. she had a recognition. Hallelujah. Yes. In the Garden of Eden, in your own family, in your own church, in your own father's home, there is recognition. Hallelujah. When this prodigal son came back, the Bible says the father ran to him and gave him a ring, gave him a, a cloth, gave him, gave him the, the coat of righteousness. And give him the party back again and put a party for him. Hallelujah. Church, this morning, it's a time for us to come back. Come back to your prayer life. Come back to your praise. Go back to your, to your kneeling time. Go back to those times that you would be a blessing to people. Where are you? Who told you? Let us not remove our ancient landmarks. There are marks God, give, uh, God has given us, hallelujah. I cannot, I cannot look like, I cannot act like an American. I'm an Indian. You, you know what I mean. Where are you today? Who told you? Elimelech lost everything. And thank God, Naomi came back to Bethlehem. And she added a recognition. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. You need to know one thing. Write it down. There will be no special person like you in your home. There's no special person like you to your spouse. There's no special person like you in your family. There's no special person like you in the church. God has given you anointing. God has given you the place. God has given you the chair. God has given you that anointing to play the music and sing for God or do whatever to welcome the people of God in the church. Where are you today? Who told you? Hallelujah. Don't move because of the circumstance and situation because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's a God of place. He's a God of location. He's a God who would come back to you in your garden. You will not come back to me in your garden and asking for me. You will come back to my garden looking for me. You know what I mean? He's a God of places. He said, I will go to my father's and prepare a place for you. And when I'm done, I'm coming back to take you to that place. Where are you? When he's coming back to take you to that place, where are you? Would you say, Lord, I'm here, available for you? Would you say, Lord, here I am, please in you? Would you say, here I am, Lord, bringing praises to your holy name? Here I am, living for you. You don't need to be a preacher. You don't need to be a singer. You don't need to be a musician. But be you are. Where are you today? Who told you? God has made us all virginal. He doesn't want us to copy anybody. Because God is looking for original people. Yes. Not a beaten church, not a copying church, but God is looking for a church who would be there as they were. Yes. 
with the first time hallelujah with the first love with the first anointing with the first thing that would drive us back there to the place god is looking for people in the place when god told adam i want to come and meet you you were not there where are you how would his heart be felt when you go back home and your child is not there when you go back home and you to your office and and your your you know your subordinates are not there it's not a good experience god has not given us this garden for us to play with god has not put here for for nothing god has a plan and a purpose you might not do big thing but you are filling your place be in your place hold on to your in your place because he's coming back when god asked abraham to take his son isaac he said i will want you to go to one of those mountains and sacrifice him there because that's where the provision is you miss the place you miss the provision when abraham and isaac was climbing fighting back tears this old man but being in obedience to be in the place I believe the ram was climbing on the other side of the of the mountain. You know when we when you and I would be it's a hard time climbing up the hill. It's not easy. At times in our life climbing up hills going up tough times going up going going through you know terrible times. But God is looking for your obedience. Where are you? I know you were blessed by that powerful message tonight. Take the time to share it with someone. And now it's opportunity time. This is the time where we give to the Lord. The scripture declares in Luke 6 and 38, give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosoms. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. So take the time out and give tonight. Be a blessing, amen? I know that you've received something good that you can take through your week, all right? So we have several fields of giving. We have first fruit giving, and that's our best, our first, our highest seed, all right? And then we have tithes and offerings. We can give into our missions, our building fund. We have step out seed, Solomon seed. I tell you, many fields to give in all to the glory of God. You're giving into good ground tonight. So we thank you for sowing. You can go to vojword.com and go to our Givelify app and click on the link. It'll be a simple process. Thank you so much for sowing into VOJ Word. And now we're gonna pray with that seed. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for those that have given tonight, Lord, and we thank you, Father God, for multiplying the seed sown, Lord. Thank you for the things that they're standing for, God, and we call them done tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you the glory and the praise. Hallelujah. You're tuning in this streaming opportunity, and you don't know the Lord. We want to offer you that opportunity. I tell you, God wants you in his family. He loves you so much, for he so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Come on to the family of God. It's simple. Hallelujah. God made it so easy. Glory to God. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Hallelujah. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Come on, just say, Father, I need you in my life. I'm tired of living the way I've been living. Lord, save me. Help me tonight, Lord. I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I want to be, Lord God, with you. I want to be with the family of God. If you said that in, sincer in sincerity tonight, then God has done it in you. You are saved. Hallelujah. Share it with someone. Amen. Hallelujah. I tell you, heaven is rejoicing right now when one person comes in. Hallelujah. And I'm rejoicing with heaven. God bless you tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. We bless you. Father, we thank you for your people, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for ministering life for a prosperous and wonderful week. We give you the glory and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for streaming in tonight.